Hello students, in this video we'll prove that convex functions on an open interval are automatically continuous. So let's recall that f is convex on AB if f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is less than or equal to lambda f of x plus 1 minus lambda f of y for all x and y, for all x and y in a, b, and all lambda between 0 and 1. Okay? That's the definition of convex. Now, of course, one immediate consequence of convexity is that you have to be underneath the chord. So let's prove that first preliminary result, namely that was. So we have an intuitive sense of what convex functions are, but I claim this. We can note that if I give you, so given given a less than c less than x less than d less than b, then I claim that f of x is underneath, that implies that f of x is below the secant line from c f of c to d f of d okay okay that's right so what we have is if x is between c and d then we have this decomposition of x then x is going to be equal to what x will be d minus x over d minus c in the direction of c plus x minus c over d minus c in the direction of d we can check this is algebraically true over here because what do we have? We have dx and we have negative cx, so that's d minus cx over d minus c gives me an x, and then I have a uh, c times d and a negative c times d, so this is certainly true. And so now what can I say? Now I can basically take uh, use the convexity, so f of x is therefore less than or equal to what? This, of course, is my lambda, that's my 1 minus lambda, and so this will be what? So this is just playing the role of my lambda, and this is my 1 minus lambda. Okay. So f of x is less than d minus x over d minus c. f of c, f of c, and then plus x minus c over d minus c, f of d, f of d. And so what we have over here, so let's, we can carefully gather the terms together. So what I would really like to show is I'd like to I claim that what this tells me is this tells me after algebraic manipulations, my goal now is to show that f of x, f of x is less than or equal to f of c plus f of d minus f of c over d minus c times x minus c, x minus c. That's my goal. And I claim that if we rearrange this, this inequality over here, we'll get exactly this. So I need to pull out an f of c over here. So what we need to put in is we need, we don't, so we have an f, we have a d f of c, and I need a what? I need an f of c, so I need a minus c f of c. So we're going to add and subtract in some terms over here. But first, let's figure out what the coefficient of x is. So the coefficient of x over here is going to be what? So this inequality says that f of x is less than or equal to what? Is less than or equal to the coefficient of x is uh, x is f of d, and then f of c over d minus c. So there's an x, and there's an f of d minus f of c over d minus c. Okay? That's good. And then what is the remaining term over here? The remaining term is a d f of c, and then a what? Then a minus c minus c f of d over d minus c. Okay? So that's not quite what I want, but if I plug in a, I can, uh, if I plug in, I can add and subtract in what? I can add and subtract in c times this quantity, and what will happen is everything will simplify, right? So this is equal to, and it's a good thing to check algebraically, that if you add in an x, if you put a negative c times that whole quantity over here, that will force me to add in a c times that quantity. Let's just check what will happen. So if I, if I subtract off a c times that quantity, I'll have a, I'll have a balance of what? I'll need a c f of d, a c f of d, which I have right here, and then a what? And then a negative c, then a negative c f of c, and that will go in right over here. So what will this will be equal to, if we check the algebra, this will be equal to f of c, which will be the term we get from that, and then plus what? Plus f of d 
minus f of c over d minus c times x minus c. Great, so f of x satisfies this bound. So again, just check the algebra over here by adding and subtracting in the quantity negative c times that quantity, that will work. So check that on your, by yourself and you'll see that that's verified, right? So I've just basically added and subtracted to nothing. And so now what we do is now we're ready to proceed to our proof of continuity. So what we're gonna do is this. So I'm gonna use this inequality twice. So here's my a, here's my b. I'm gonna have s, I'm going to have u, I'm going to have v, and I'm going to have t over here. Okay, so I'm gonna pick all those points over there. And I'm gonna do a couple different things. So I'm gonna use the inequality on this range and on this range over here. So in the first range, what can I say? Since the, since the points S, U, and V are configured in this manner, what I get is the following. I have that F of U is less than or equal to what? Is less than or equal to F of S, F of S, then the secant line slope, F of V minus F of S over V minus S times U minus S. Okay, let's just check that's x to the secant line. When I plug in uh, u equals s, that term vanishes, which is good. And when I plug in u equals what? When I plug in u equals v, that's gonna turn into an f of v. So that exactly works, that's great. And I can apply the inequality over here as well. Next, let me rearrange this a little bit. What this says, if I do my algebra correctly, is if I look at f of u minus f of s over u minus s times v minus s plus f of v, I, uh, plus f of s, I'll get the following. I'll get that f of s, f of s, and then plus what? Plus f of u minus f of s, f of u minus f of s over u minus s, times what? Times v minus s, is gonna be what? So let's do this more carefully, actually. Let's be a little more careful about this. So what we're gonna do is the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract off an f of s and then divide by f of what? So if I do this, I'm gonna have, okay, so the first thing we do is we have f of u minus f of s, then divided by u minus s times this plus this. So we're gonna have f of s first, that's right, f of s plus f of u, f of u minus f of s over u minus s times v minus s is less than or equal to what? Is less than or equal to f of v f of v. Great, so that's one inequality that we need. And then over here, what will we get? Over here, we're gonna get f of v is less than or equal to what? Is less than or equal to f of u plus what? Plus f of t minus f of u over t minus u. And then times what? Times a v minus u. Great. And so let me put these inequalities together and see what, we, what we, we can arrive at. So putting these inequalities together, what do we get? We get f of s plus f of u minus f of s over u minus s times v minus s it is less than or equal to f of v. It is less than or equal to this quantity over here, f of u plus f of t minus f of u over t minus u times v minus u. Now we're done. The reason why we're done is because I'm gonna ask the following question, what happens as I take the limit as v goes to u? So what happens as the limit as v goes to u? The limit as v approaches u of f of v is gonna be what? Let's figure out what it's gonna be. As I let v go to u, this expression over here is zero, and I just get a what? I get an f of u. And as I let v go to u over here, this is gonna turn into what? This is gonna turn into a u minus s, so the u minus s's will cancel, and the f of s's will cancel, and this will just turn into a what? 
that will just turn to an f of u. So on either side, as I let v go to u, I go to f of u over here, I go to f of u over here, and therefore the limit as v goes to u of f of, the limit as v goes to u of f of v is f of u, and I've just proven that the function f is continuous at u. And since u is an arbitrary point inside the open interval a, b, that proves that a convex function is continuous on all of the open interval a, b. Thank you very much.